Following on from the factor theorem, we're now going to have a look at the remainder theorem. It's basically pretty much the same thing. It's just that when we put our value for a in, when we're looking at dividing by x minus a, we don't get zero. And what's left is the remainder. So really, the factor theorem is the remainder theorem when f of a is zero. It only gives us the remainder. It doesn't enable us to find the quotient. We would still need to use other methods to do so. And it's exactly the same method as we use for the factor theorem. So we set up our polynomial as f of x equals. And then we try, well, if we try an x minus 1 divided into this, we would do f of 1. Wouldn't we remember the signs different? It's making this 0. We get 4, so we know that the remainder is 4. And it's really that simple. So it says that if we divide a polynomial f of x by x minus a, the remainder is given by f of a. And if that remainder is 0, then x minus a is a factor. OK, let's work through an example. We're trying to find the remainder when x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 is divided by x minus 2. We make it read as f of x. So if it's x minus 2, then we put a in as 2. So we look at f of 2, and that gives us the remainder. We put our values for 2 in for x. So we replace x's with 2's. And we end up with 13. So we end up with a remainder of 13. If we carry out long division, like we did last lesson, it's a good idea to use the remainder theorem to make sure that we're right. It's very likely, if you get the remainder right, that the quotient's going to be right. It is important, however, in exam questions that you do exactly as you're asked. And if you're asked to use the remainder theorem, you must do that because you'll get no marks if you use division, if it's asking you to use the remainder theorem. OK, another example. This time we've got 2x plus 1, so a little bit trickier. Set it up as f of x equals. Then think about the value of a we need. Well, if 2x plus 1 is 0, then a would need to be minus a half, wouldn't it? So we look at f of minus a half. A little bit tricky with all the fractions. And we end up with 21 over 8 as our remainder. OK, well, that's it. Your turn now. Have a quick go at these. If you're successful, then you'll be ready for the lesson. If not, go back over it until you're fairly confident that you can answer questions like these. Pause the presentation and have a go. OK, well, the answer to the first one, then, we set up as f of x. We put minus 1 in if x plus 1 is what we're dividing into the cubic. And we get a remainder of minus 5. For the next question, we're told that x plus 2 is a factor, and if we divide x minus 1 in, we get minus 3. And we're asked to find the values of a and b. So what we're going to need to do here is set up some equations. Write what you know. Well, we'll start off by setting up, as we've done throughout, f of x equals. We know that if x plus 2 is a factor, then with minus 2 in, we get 0. So put that in. And we know that if we divide by x minus 1, we get an answer of minus 3. So put that in. If we then simplify these as much as we can, we end up with two simultaneous equations to solve. And we can see here, if we add them together, we lose our b's, don't we? Minus b plus b is 0. We get 3a on the left-hand side and 9 on the right-hand side. So a is 3. And then we can just stick a in to either of these to find out the value of b, which is obviously minus 1. 